Today on Tabletop for One, I walk you through rivers, surges, and sunlight as though this is your first game playing Spirit Island as a solo player. So thank you very much for joining me with, on Tabletop for One. Let's go ahead and show you how to get this set up for your first game. So the first thing you want to do is set up the boards like this here. You got the fear board that has the phases and everything on it. You're going to put four fear right here. It's four fear per player. If you were playing with more than one character, of course, you would add the appropriate fear in that spot. Also, find River's power progression card. In the rule book, it recommends that you follow this progression when you're gaining new powers in a game. So I would suggest that you set up a deck of cards that represents those cards in order. And so as you gain cards, you just take the top one off of the deck and you're going to add that to your hand. So I have those set up already. Next, we're going to add five blight to this area here it says five per player so there's one two three four five but there was an error and um it's been discussed on board game geek the designer says that after you've added all your blight here you're going to add one more blight so you get six for one player now if if you had two spirits you would do five plus five plus one more, making an 11, and so on. Next, you're going to set up the Invader deck, and the Invader deck consists of three level one cards, which go on top of four level two cards and five level three cards. You're going to set those here, and then you're going to take the Fear deck. In the Fear deck, you're going to have nine total cards. You're going to take your first three, and you're going to place the Terror level three, tile there then you're going to take your next three place the terror level two on top of that and then your final three there and you're going to place it in the fear deck spot here okay now on the back of the board of your spirit it tells you how to set up your spirit so you're going to play place one of your presents that's what these circle discs are the presents in the highest number wetland so they're numbered here. This is one, one and three, and so three is the highest one, and it'll go there. There's also an explanation on the play style on the back of the, each of the spirit boards, so if you need to reference that, feel free to. Then on the front of the board, you're going to populate all the tokens here, leaving the furthest left spots empty. So I will set this up here. All right, you also have your starting four cards that have your character's portrait on the back. So you'll have those ready to go. You'll want to read your special rules at the bottom here for river. Anytime you have a presence in the wetlands, it's considered a sacred site. Normally a sacred site would be two presents stacked together. But for river in the wetlands, you only count one of those as a sacred site. And that's just for the use of powers. So now that we've set all that up, we're going to go ahead and populate the board here. And so on the board, it gives you symbols in the different areas that tell you exactly what you need. So we need two Dahan here. One Dahan here. One here. And two here. It's always six to Han on each board, one town, and one city. And then, of course, we're going to add one blight to the board here. Now, you notice I had the blight upside down. It's just for ease of me grabbing them. My big fingers have a hard time grabbing them when they're right side up. Uh, so it has nothing to do with the gameplay. That's just how how it is for me so now we go to the final step of the setup and we're going to set up the do the first explore of the game and so they're going to explore into the sands and so when you explore it's any uh matching land adjacent to the coast or the the ocean there or any matching land adjacent to a town or a city so 
that one is adjacent to that city there. And then this one here explores into itself. Okay. Now we are all set. We'll move this to the build section. So now we get to decide our growth phase. See, if you look over here, everything's lined up for you to tell you exactly how this goes. It's growth phase, then gain energy, choose and pay for powers, then you do fast powers, then you go through this whole list here, then slow powers, and then the round ends and you move on. So we are in the growth phase now, and you get to pick one of these three sections to do. And so this first section says I can reclaim my cards, gain a power card, and gain an extra energy. Well, I have all my cards, so I don't really need to reclaim them at this moment. This next one says I could place one presence one space away, and then place another presence one space away. This one says I get to gain a power card and add a presence two spaces away. So what I think I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add... One presence one space away, and another presence another space away. We're going to add one here. I think we'll add one there. So the first placement was one space away from, from this one. And that second placement here was one space away from this one. So that's how that worked. Now we gain as much energy as the, the furthest right empty uh, space shows us. And so we gain two energy. And then we are allowed to play two cards. Uh, we only have two energy, so I have to keep that in mind. I'm going to play Flash Floods and River's Bounty. And I'll explain these as I play them when I when they activate. So now that I've chosen my powers, i got to pay for them. So it's two energy gone. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the fast powers now. So the, the Flash Flood is a fast power, and that's always indicated by the bird here in the speed or by the red circle around the energy there. And this other one's a slow power, so it's gonna happen later in the round. So Flash Flood says that I get to do uh, one damage in one space away from my presence, up to one space away. And so I'm looking at the board here, and you always wanna kinda keep an eye out what's coming up next. You wanna try and prevent builds. That's a really good way of de-escalating the situation. So. They're going to build in the sand in just a moment. So if I kill this explorer right now, they won't build there. And so that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and kill the explorer. Okay, now we go on to the invader phase. And first we would check our Blighted Island. We are not using the Blighted Island card, so this would not come into play. When you are comfortable with the game, you'll add the Blighted Island cards in. They add more difficulty, so just keep that in mind. Next, we would use any fear cards we have earned, but we have not earned any yet, since this is the first round. We'll go into Ravage. There is no Ravage yet, since this is the first round. And so next, we go into the Built. And so they're going to build in the Sands. All right. If there's only an Explorer and no towns, you're going to build a town. If there is a town and no cities, you're going to build a city. If there is a town and a city, you'll build a town. <laughs> If there's two towns and one city, you'll build a city, and so on. <laughs> so in this case right now, we're going to go ahead and build a city in the sands here. And so at this time, I want to explain the difference between each of these units on the board. So the explorers have one health and deal one damage. The towns, as indicated by their two rooftops, have two health and deal two damage. The cities then, of course have three rooftops, so three health and deal three damage. The Dahan, on the other hand, have two health and deal two damage each. Okay, so now that that build is done, we're going to move on to the explore phase. So we're going to flip this one over here, and they're going to explore into the jungle. So first off, they'll explore into that jungle, and then this one's adjacent to this t uh, city here, so they'll explore there. That's done, and now we're going to do my slow power. So my slow power says, gather up to two Dahan and in a space of zero range. All right, so the way gather works is first you're going to target the land, right? So it has to be a space that's in zero range, so a space where I have presence, basically. And so I'm going to target this space here. And so when you gather, you're always pulling in from adjacent spaces. When you're pushing, you're always pushing out from that target space. So in this case of the gather here, I'm going to go ahead and gather one Dahan here and one Dahan here. 
And now the card says, if there are now at least two Dahan, add one Dahan and gain one energy. So we're going to add one Dahan to that spot. Once again, it's the target land that gain, gets this benefit. And then I'll gain an energy here. So now we want to also check on the side of these cards here. You'll notice these have colored symbols on the side of the cards. So I have two yellows, two blues, and one red. The great things about the spirits is they have their own special powers that you can use each round, assuming you have enough of the essence to do so. So in this case here with River, I just need one yellow and two blue to activate this ability. Well, I have two yellow and two blue, so it's more than enough. And the ability says, within one range of one of my sacred sites, I can push one explorer or one town. So I think I'm going to target this space here and go ahead and push this one away. And so that's going to be the end of the round. So we discard our cards here. So we're back at the beginning of the spirit phase. We're going to choose one of our growth options. And I think I'm going to go ahead and gain a power card. Which is going to be uncanny melting. And then I'm going to add a presence two spaces away. And I think we will go with this one here. We'll add it in this spot. And so now we're going to gain energy. So I gain two energy. And we're going to choose the cards to play. I think I'm going to play Uncanny Melting and Wash Away. That's going to cost me one each. And now we go on to the fast powers phase, which we do not have any fast powers, so we're going to move right into the invader phase. We do not have any fear cards, but we do have a ravage. So the first thing that's going to happen is they're going to attack here. Now when this happens, the invaders, they always hit first, and they hit both the Dahan and the land at the same time. So we add up their total damage, it's going to be six damage against the four health of the Dahan. So the Dahan are going to die. And anytime you do more than two damage to a land, you're going to add a blight. It doesn't matter how much damage that ends up being, as long as it's more than two, you'll just add one blight to the land. So land gets the blight there. And then we're going to move on to the build phase. And so we are building in the jungle here, or the invaders are building in the jungle. So we're going to add a town here. And then we're going to add a town on the coast. And then we go on to the explorer phase. And they're going to explore into the wetlands. Which both get explored from the ocean there, but they're also adjacent to the city. And that is done. Alright, now we have our slow power cards. So first we're going to use uncanny melting. It says, within one space of the sacred site. If invaders are present, add one fear, and if it's a sands or wetlands, remove one blight. Well, we're going to target this space. There's invaders present, so we get one fear. And there's a blight there, and it's the sands, so we get to remove that blight and put it back on the board. And then we're going to use wash away. So wash away lets me target invaders one space away, up to one space away, and I can push up to three explorers or towns away. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and push these two over here. This will prevent a build the, or a ravage the next round in this area. All right. So now that that's done, I also have the option of, I have one yellow and two blue, so I can push one explorer or one town away from a spot of my sacred site. And actually this one here has one explorer in it and there's a sacred site here so we're going to push it away so that'll prevent a build and now we can go ahead and discard our cards and it's the end of the phase so now we're going back to the growth phase and so i'm going to choose since i only have one card in my hand i'm going to choose this growth option here which lets me reclaim my cards so now i have all my cards back it lets me gain a power card so once again i'm taking the top card of that stack and this time it's nature's resilience. Again, this is going to be in order on the power progression card. So if you need to reference that at any time, please do so. And then I also gain one extra energy. And now we, we are ready for to choose our cards and stuff. I gained two more energy there. 
And so I'm going to choose Nature's Resilience as my first card. And I'm going to choose Flash Floods as my second card. All right. So that's going to cost me a total of three energy. The first thing is Nature's Resilience lets me defend one space away from my sacred site. I get to defend six. So I'm going to target this land here, which is one space away from either of my two sacred sites currently. I'm going to place this token here to indicate that I'm going to defend there. And then I get to do Flash Fuds. These are both fast powers here. So I'm going to deal one damage, one space away. I'm going to go ahead and target the wetlands here. And this says that since it's a coastal land, I get to do an extra damage. So I'm actually doing two damage and getting rid of those explorers. And that's also going to prevent a build. Okay. So now we go on to the Ravager phase because uh, we don't have any fear cards. So we're going to go into the Ravager phase and they're going to Ravage in the jungle. So I have defend six here. That means I defend six points of damage to both the land and the Dahan. And so all six of this damage from the invaders, remember one, two, three, four, five, six damage there is not going to happen. But the Dahan will fight back. They have a total of 8 damage. 2, 4, 6, 8. So they're going to kill every single one of these here. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a total of 3 fear. Because you get 2 fear from 1 city and 1 fear from 1 town that you destroy. So that gives me 3 fear. Now I've generated all my fear. So I'm going to push this back up and gain a fear card for the next round. And so now that that's done, we go on to the build phase. They're going to build in the wetlands, but there are currently no invaders in the wetlands. So that just gets moved up. And now we are going to explore into the coastal lands. And so what that means is explore every adjacent area next to the coastal lands. So there's going to be three areas here. So all three of those get explored, which... Remember, that means all three of those are going to be building the next round. So you got to keep that in mind. All right. And so at this point, we move on to slow powers. I did not earn enough essence on here for any of my slow powers. So we move on. I'm going to discard those cards. We need to go back to the growth phase now and probably add some more presence on the board. I also want to look at preventing some of these uh, builds here. Not sure how I'm going to do that. They are ravaging in the, the wetlands. I think what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and reclaim my cards again. I normally don't recommend this when there's only like two cards in your discard pile. But in this case, I think it's going to be more advantageous for me to go ahead and reclaim them. So I reclaim them. Then I gain a power card. So we're going to take the top card of that deck. And that's pull beneath the hungry earth. Alright. And then... Uh, we get an extra energy. Now we get two energy from our our energy income. I think I want to go ahead and do flash floods and pull beneath the hungry earth. And so that's going to cost me three energy. And now we're ready for the fast powers. All right, so I only have one fast power here, and it's flash flood. And I'm going to go ahead and target this space here, killing this explorer. So now that's done, we're going to go on to the fear stage and so we do have a fear card here and so on the fear card here you're going to look at the section that corresponds to your current terror level or in terror level one so on here it says each player removes one explorer from a coastal land okay it's going to seem counterproductive but i'm going to remove this one here this one would have died anyways during the ravage but there's a reason for me removing this one and not this one. And I'll show you in just a moment. You may already see it, but I'll show you. Okay, so now that the fear card's done, we move on to the, the Ravage. And it's going to Ravage in the Wetlands. This Explorer here does one damage. So nothing happens there. This other one has no invaders in it, so nothing happens there. Okay, so now we go on to the build. And so they're going to build in the, the coast here. And we're just going to get one town right there all right and then next it's going to explore into the mountains and so both the mountains are going to get explored here so we got one here and one there 
All right, now we go on to slow powers. So pull beneath the hungry earth says, target a space up to one space away from my presence. If the target land has your presence, one fear and one damage. If the target land is sands or wetlands, one damage. So if I target this wetlands here, I'm doing two damage and gaining the fear. So I gain the fear, I'm gonna do two damage, killing off the town. Now that's also gonna generate one more fear. That is why I allowed it to build that turn because I wanted to gain that extra fear for the card I played. I could have prevented the build, but I decided to do that. However, in the end, I, I could have also gotten rid of one of these guys who are going to build next round. So that's a decision I have to live with. But uh, moving on, we also have my slow power here. And so I can, from one space away, push a explorer or town. And so I think I will go ahead and target this one here. And I'm going to push this one into this wetlands here. That's one space away from my sacred site. And so that's done. And so that's going to end the round. And we'll discard those cards. And so now at this point, we're going to go back to the growth phase. And I want to get more presence on the board. So I think what I'm going to do is do the two presence thing here. I'm going to add one here. And I'm going to add one probably here. Now I get two energy. And now I can play up to three cards. So I definitely want to play River's Bounty. And they're ravaging in the coastal land. So I don't need to play Nature's Resilience. I don't need to defend this turn. I do want to consider using Wash Away. I don't know what cards are coming next, but this will help me react to what could happen next. So let's say if I draw this card here and it's sands, I may want to move these in the, in the slow phase so as to prevent some builds and stuff. And you'll see how that plays out. And then my last card, I think I want to generate some energy. So I'm going to use Boon of Vigor. All I got to pay is one energy for this. And then we go into the fast power stage. So the Boon of Vigor triggers here and it just says I get to gain one energy. And that's done. I don't have any other fast powers at this point, so we move on to the Ravage. There's no fear card, so yeah, straight on to the Ravage. So this Explorer is going to attack here. It's going to do one damage to the Dahan. And you just flip it over like that to indicate it's been damaged. But the Dahan is going to fight back and kill the Explorer. So no Blights added to the land because there's only one damage. This one does one damage to the land, but nothing happens. And then we go on to the build in the mountains. And so we're just going to build the one town there. And that's done. And then we move on to sands. And we're going to explore into the sands. Well, <laughs> there, I said it might be sands, and sure it was. So we explore into that sands and that sands. At this point, we go into the slow phase. And I have a couple options here. So... First of all, I have one, two, three blue, and two yellow, which means I actually have the upgraded version here. So I can deal two damage and push some explorers or towns away. I also have the wash away. So first I'm going to do wash away. Let's go ahead and target these here. And we're going to wash them into here. This is going to be a little crazy. Okay. I'm going to use my massive flooding in here dealing two damage to this town that's going to gain me another fear and it says i can push up to two explorers away i suppose i could probably push these two into here jungle's not on the board right now so maybe that'll be helpful so that's done and then i have river's bounty and so that's going to gather to dahan in a space where i have presence so i'm going to I'm going to gather into there. So we're going to gather these two here. And then it's going to add another Dahan there. And I'm going to gain an energy. And so I'm trying to set this up so I can do a really good defense here the next turn. Because then I can use Nature's Resilience in that spot. So now that's, a, that's done, that's going to end this round. The Dahan here that got injured earlier is going to heal back up. As would any towns that, or cities that got hurt that weren't destroyed. All right, so it feels like I'm really progressing along. River's growing quite well and, and doing quite well. So let's see what else we can do. Now, the cool thing is, is if I gain a new card right now, 
A major power is on top of that stack, and I'm really tempted to do that, so I think I will. I'll go ahead and reclaim all my cards. I will gain that one power card. So when you gain a major power card, you have to get rid of one of your other cards. You have to, what's called, forget one of your cards. So we are going to forget Boon of Vigor. I just stick that under my board there, and that's done. And I, I also get the one energy from here. I'm going to gain two more energy. And so now we have a total of seven energy. So now what I want to do is I want to deal with the, the mountainous area because they're going to ravage this round. So I definitely want to... Oh, I forgot to show you the card that I got. Accelerated Rot. I target a space up to two spaces away, jungle or wetlands. I gain two fear, deal four damage. And on top of that, if I have three yellow, two blue, and three uh, green, I deal an additional five damage and remove light. I don't think I'll get that far on that, but... This is definitely going to be useful if Jungle and Wetlands pops up again. Right now, Jungle and Wetlands is okay, so I'm not worried about it. But let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Alright, so we definitely want to play Nature's Resilience. Because we want to defend in this area here, we need to defend 6. Right now, they're going to be able to do 7 damage total. So if we defend 6, only 1 damage will get through and it won't cause any blight. So that's our goal there. I definitely also want to add more fear to the the board here so I think we're gonna do uncanny melting to aid with that and then we're gonna use wash away to help with anything that we might encounter after the fact so we're gonna pay for these three here which is gonna cost three energy and so first things first is we get nature's resilience which is gonna put a token here for the defense we go into the fear stage we don't have enough fear for our fear card, so we're gonna go on to the Ravage. And so the Ravage is happening in the mountains. Once again, they're gonna do seven damage, which is really gonna end up only being one damage and hitting a Dahan, not adding any Blight. The Dahan are gonna fight back doing six damage, so they're gonna hit the town, both the towns, and two explorers. All right, and so that's gonna add on to fear. So we get one, which gives us a new fear card. These go back up. And we gain one more. Alright, so that's a good amount of fear. We nearly clear the board here. But, uh, <laughs> it's not going to work out that way. Because now we go on to the build in the sands. And the sands is ready to build a town right here. And so now we move on to the explore. And they're going to explore in the wetlands. Alright. There we go. And now we get to go to our slow powers. So our slow powers include Wash Away and Uncanny Melting. So with Uncanny Melting, we're just targeting a land one space away with uh, from my sacred site and to gain a fear. It could be this land. It could be this land. We're just going to go ahead and gain a fear. With Wash Away, we're going to try and pull some explorers or towns away here. We're going to target this space and push these two into the jungle. And then with massive flooding, because we have one blue, two blue, and one yellow there, we're going to do the same in the wetlands here, pushing that into the jungle. So that's going to prevent builds next round. That's going to be huge. <laughs> this is going to be great. Uh, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's see what happens next, all right? So that's all done. That's going to end the round. Our poor little uh, Dahan that was hurt earlier gets healed so he's back up to full health we'll remove my token here and we're moving on into the next round so at this point i think i'm going to go ahead and use the add presence so i want to add one here and then i want to add one here and so with that in mind i now get three energy and on top of that, I get to reclaim one card. See this symbol down here, and it tells you underneath it says I get to reclaim one card. So I have to go through my discard and reclaim one card. We're going to reclaim Nature's Resilience. And we're going to go ahead and use Nature's Resilience, because we want to defend here and prevent a blight from happening. We're going to use our major power card, Accelerated Rot. And that's going to cost uh, quite a bit, so that's going to be another four. So we have two left over, and if I don't see anything else I would necessarily want to do with those, 
but we might as well use pull beneath the hungry earth and see what what happens in the uh, in the explore phase when we can do some extra damage. So now uh, we're gonna pay for that. It's gonna be a total of six energy. And now we go on to the fast powers. Of course, we've got the defend six there. And now we're going on to the fear cards. And so we have one fear card. And it says invaders do not build in lands with cities. All right. Well, it doesn't look like they were going to, so <laughs> sometimes the fear cards don't help you. That's just the way it goes. All right, so now we go into the Ravage. And so they're going to Ravage in the Sands, which happens right here, but we defend completely, preventing all damage. Now we move on to the build in the Wetlands. Well, guess what? We prevented all the builds in the Wetlands. So we're going to go on to the Explore. Oh, now we're in the Double Cards. And so it's going to Explore in the Jungle from the coast there. It's going to Explore in this Jungle from this city here and explore into itself there but this one doesn't get explored into because there's no towns or cities adjacent to it and it's not adjacent to the coast so that's convenient all right now with that in mind we get to use our slow powers and so check this out we had a big old explore right there but i'm think i'm gonna leave that i'm not gonna attack that one because I want, we have Dahan here. We, if we can defend later, we'll use the Dahan to fight back. So I'm going to attack these here. So we're going to target with this one. Again, two spaces away from my presence, but I have presence in that space. It's a jungle. And we're going to gain two fear, which gives us another fear card. And now we've entered into terror level two. Now with Terra level 2, the victory condition has now changed. No longer is it in get rid of all the invaders. Now it's get rid of all towns and cities. We are almost there. We just have a town and a city here. Alright. So, now do 4 damage. But it's only going to be 3. So we're going to get rid of these 3 explorers there. Perfect. Okay, and so now we have Pull Beneath the Hungry Earth. I can target a land that has my presence for extra effect. And now you see I've gotten presence almost everywhere. And so this is where it's really beneficial. If you can get presence everywhere, it's going to make your powers all that more effective. So I'm going to Pull Beneath the Hungry Earth. I'm going to do a total of two damage if it's a Sands or a Wetland. So we're going to do two damage here. And we're just going to go ahead and kill this town which gives me one fear on top of that the card itself says i gain another fear so we just gain two fear from that card i also have two blues and yellow which lets me push one explorer or one town from a space i guess we can go ahead and um, push this one away and it's, it's from one space away from my sacred site. So I have a sacred site here and here. So that is within range. Okay, that is going to end that turn. We discard those cards. And now we're ready to go on to the next round. So I'm down to two cards. I can reclaim one. Or I can look at using this growth option. Getting all my cards back. Getting one of my new cards. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to reclaim all my cards. I'm going to gain my next power card, which is a minor power this time. Song of Sanctity, which targets one space um, away, uh, mountains or jungles. If the land has explorers, push all explorers. Otherwise, remove one blight. And then um, we gain an extra energy. On top of that, we gain another three energy. Well, I think the opportunity has really presented itself to us to attack the jungle with Accelerated Rot. I think we're going to take advantage of that opportunity because what's going to happen here is they're going to build. So they're going to build a town. If I do four damage there, it's going to get rid of two explorers and the town. It's just leaving one explorer, which is no issue for us. <laughs> I had to correct that card. That, I don't know why I put it away, but there it's back. All right, so now I want to also set up to attack this place. 
And so we know they're going to build in Sands this turn, which means they're going to get a Dahan, or I mean, sorry, a town here. So we want to move Dahan in here so that the following turn, when they ravage, we have somebody to defend with. So we're going to use River's Bounty again. That's our second card. And then our last card, I think we'll use Pull Beneath the Earth one more time. So these are all three slow power cards. I know the fast power cards seem effective. It makes you want to go for the fast power cards all the time because they seem to be effective, but the slow power ones are highly powerful. They can really change the state of the game, especially if you plan ahead. You just often have to think about, all right, if I use this card, I can't use it yet, but once the invader phase happens and the ravage, the build and the explore happens, then that card will become more effective and then I'll be able to use it and change the state of the whole next round just off of those slow power cards. So keep that in mind. Slow power cards are very useful. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the fear stage and we have a fear card. Now it's terror level two. So we're going to get the level two version of this. And it says each player removes two explorers or a town from a land with Dahan. I guess we could just get rid of these, right? Might as well. So that's done. <laughs> okay. So now we go on to the Ravage stage. This is going to Ravage in the Wetlands. This one Lonely Explorer is going to attack the Dahan, dealing one damage to it. But the Dahan fights back and kills it. So the Ravage is done. Then we go on to the Jungle and Sands build. So we're going to build a town here. And we're going to build a town here. And now we explore into the Sands and Wetlands. So we got Wetlands... Sands being explored from this town here, as well as this one, also from the coast. So either way it happens. And this one here. All right. So now we get to our slow powers. And so our slow powers, first of all, we're going to do Accelerated Rot targeting this jungle here. We gain two fear right off the bat, which gives us another fear card. Then um, we deal four damage. So it's we only needed three. We kill off a town. So we gain another fear off of that. Then we're going to do River's Bounty here. And River's Bounty says that I can gather up to two Dahan into a space where I have a presence. So we got this one here. We're going to gather these two in. And it adds one more. And it gives me an energy. And then we have Pull Beneath the Hungry Earth. So we want to target a land with my presence if possible, sands or wetlands, dealing damage, two damage and gaining a fear. Since they're building in the wetlands next turn and the sands, I think I, I think I'm gonna destroy this one. Do one damage there, and then I gain one fear. I also have the option of pulling. I think, let's see. Actually, check this out. We have two yellows and three blues. So that means I can do two damage and push up to three explorers or towns. And so I actually want to go ahead and do two damage here, killing that town. And we'll push these explorers into the mountains. And we'll gain one more fear from destroying that town. All right. We are really in a good spot here. So that's going to end this round. And now we're going to go into the growth phase. I think we're just going to add some presence on the board. Let's get everywhere now and start doubling up on the places I don't have sacred sites. And now I get four energy. And I'm able to play four cards if I want to. So this is where you get to the point of being able to do the, the bigger powers on here if you can if you can pull it off. So if I play these four cards right here, this will gain me four blues and three yellows and, and the one black. I was making sure I got that to do this big power here. However, actually, you know what? Let's do that. <laughs> now that I think about it, let's, let's do that. It's five energy, which happens to be what I have. So we're going to do five energy. All right. And so now we are all set for this phase. We're going to do the fast power first, which is flash floods. And so I get to target a land and deal one damage. And so let's just go ahead and do one damage here. 
And then we're going to do the fear card. And so the fear card says we're level two. It says invaders do not build in lands where the Dahan outnumber the cities or towns. All right, that's very convenient. And so now we go into the ravage phase. And so it's going to ravage in the jungle. There's nothing in the jungle. It's going to ravage in the sands. Well, we have the city here. So the city's going to do three damage first. And so he's going to cause a blight to the land for doing two damage to the land. He's going to kill off one to Han because that's, or sorry, three damage. He did over two damage to the land. He does three damage total to the Dahan, so two there and three, but check this out. Those two Dahan survive. They're going to attack back. Four damage against this city, killing it. Do you know what that means? <laughs> that means we won. Check this out. Victory condition. Kill all towns and cities on the board. As soon as that condition is met, you have won the game, and we did here. <laughs> so there you go. And so you have now watched the playthrough of the solo mode for Spirit Island using River Surges and Sunlight. Please comment below what you thought of the playthrough and what your favorite spirit is in Spirit Island. And if you have any questions about Spirit Island, please ask them. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. Other than that, I thank you so much for watching Tabletop for One and have a great night.